Welcome to our seventh tutorial about fluid mechanics. The last tutorial covered how to find hydrostatic force on a plane surface. However, many surfaces are not planes. For example, the interior of a cylindrical pipe is not a plane. So how to find hydrostatic force on a curved surface? The answer is to follow these steps. First, we use planes to bound the curved surface. For example, we use A, B, and A, C to bound the surface. Note that this is just the front wheel. If we draw the whole thing out, it should look like this. We could also use these two planes. We can even use this single plane. So this is done. And we calculate the force on each plane as in the previous video. After that, we shall calculate the weight of the fluid enclosed by all the surfaces. In this figure, we shall calculate the weight enclosed by surface 1, surface 2, and surface 3. Finally, we sum all the forces found from 2 and 3. In this example, we have to sum this force, this force, and this force. And summing these three forces gives the equivalent hydrostatic force. If the pressure center is required, then we need a few extra steps. First, we find the moment by each component about an arbitrary point, say point B here. That is, we have to find the moment arms first, that is this length, this length, and this length. Then we calculate the moment by each vector, that is like this, like this, and like this. Then we have to sum the moment found in one. Finally, we have to locate the force FR. If we have FR going like this, then we have to find this length such that it produces the same moment about the same point B. Actually, this procedure works for inclined surface too. If you are not convinced, let's apply the procedure on this review problem. We have a plane surface here, so that indeed you can use the previous video's method. You will see that using this new method will be much more complicated. So as our first step, we use planes to bound the surface. So we use this plane and this plane. First, we draw a free boy diagram. We label this as F1, F2, but note that all the four forces are uniformly distributed on the width of the gate, so that we are only interested on the force per length, and we add primes to denote that. And we also get the dimension for this triangle. So this is 2, this is 1.2, this is 1.6 in meters. So this is our unknown, and we shall note these three forces. So we go on and calculate these three forces. So F1 prime is the hydrostatic force per length, and that is gamma hc1 area per length. And we substitute in the values of hc and a1 prime. So that is gamma. So what is hc1? If this is the centroid of this surface, then this length is going to be hc1. And that will be 2 meter plus half of this length. So we write it down. And what is A1 prime? A1 prime is the area per length. And what is area per length? If we draw this in a 3D way, it is going to look like this. And this is our area 1. So this length is in fact our area per length. And that is 1.6. So we write down 1.6. And that is 4.48 gamma meter squared. Similarly for F2 prime, that is gamma HC2 A2 prime. And that is gamma... So what is HC2? HC2 is the depth of the tank, so that is 2 plus 1.6. And A2 prime is this length, and that is 1.2. And that is 4.32 gamma meter squared. And F3 prime, that is gamma volume prime. And volume is the volume enclosed. Since volume is all the water here, so our volume per length is this area. So it's just base times height divided by 2. And that is 0 0.96 gamma meter squared. To calculate the moment about the hinge, we must also calculate the moment arm for each force. So how to find D1? We know that for pressure center of 1, it must be below the centroid. So if this is the centroid, then this would be the pressure center. And force 1 is acting on a pressure center. And of course we know this length. This one is just half of this one. About this one, we can know it from the formula from the previous video. So D1 equals the distance between the central and the hinge, and that is 1.6 divided by 2, plus how much the pressure center is below the central, and that is Ixc divided by Yc times A. And this is just Hc, and we expand it, and we cancel this out, and we plug in the values, 
And then we go on and calculate D2, D3, and Dw. D2 is easy. Since the pressure here is uniform, we conclude that this length is just half of the whole length. And that is 1.2 divided by 2 equals 0 0.6 meters. And for the third guy, weights of the water acts through the CG of the water. CG is just nothing but the central. So this is just the central for the triangle. And this length is one third of this length. And we write it down. D3 equals 1.2 divided by 3. That's still from 4 meters. And finally for DW. Again, FW is the weight of the gate. And it acts through the central of the gate. So again, it must be half of this whole length. And that is 1.2 divided by 2, and that is 0 0.6 meter. And finally, we have moment balance. FW is creating a clockwise top. This is also clockwise. These two are anti-clockwise. So we must have F3D3 plus FWDW equals F1D1 plus F2D2. Since we are concerning per unit length, we add some times here. And we substitute in all the values we just found. And we bring all the constant to the right hand side and factor it. And that equals times 9.8k, since water has a specific rate of 9.8k, and we solve for fw, and we multiply by the width of the gate, that is 1.8, and we now do an easy example for curved surface. First, we are going to use a plane to bound the surface. Of course, we are going to use this plane. If we draw this whole thing out, it is going to look like this and then go this way. This is 2 meter, and this is 1 meter. And this is the surface we use to bound the curved surface. And if we draw a free body diagram, there is only two forces. One is the hydrostatic force on the plane, and one is the weight of the water. So we label this as F1, this is F2. And we find F1 is gamma HCA. And water has 9.8k specific weights. And HC is the distance between this point and the water level. So this is 1 meter, and so the total length is 3 meter. And the area is going to be 2 times 1, and that is, and this is 58.8 kN. And for the vertical component, we have gamma V. And for this half cylinder, the volume is going to be pi r squared divided by 2 times the length. And we substitute in the value. And we are done with this example. We now do a final hard example. Hope your exam won't be so hard. But the approach has already been illustrated in example 1. First, we are using two plates to bound the curved surface. We use this surface and this surface. And we now draw a free body diagram for this square. A vertical force from the bottom, the hydrostatic force on the side, the weight of the water, the weight of the gate. And we label the four forces. Since we are just interested in the force per unit length, so we add times gain. And again, we shall note these three forces. So we quickly find these three forces for F1, gamma HC1, area prime. And the same choice for this rectangle is going here so this is 0 0.5 and this is 0 0.5 so this guy is 3.5 3.5 1 1 is this length and that is 0 0.5 gamma meter square and for 2 we also have gamma hd 2 a 2 prime and that is gamma this is just the depth of the water so that is 4 meters and, and this length is 1, so 1, and 4 gamma meter square, and for 3 gamma volume per length. And the volume per length is just the area here, so that would be the area of the square minus the area of the quarter 
Exactly. And that is 0 0.21460 gamma meter squared. And we find all the four moment arms as shown in the figure. That is 1, 2, 3, 4. And actually, I forgot to mention that there are reaction force from the hinge. And we left off from these two examples, there are reaction force here and reaction force from here. But this does not affect the result since the reaction acts through the hinge and it produces no moment. So we have D1 equals the distance between the central and the P4, that is 1 over 2, because this length is 1, plus how much the pressure center is below the central. So that is I, X, D, C divided by Y, C, A. And Y, C is just H, C. So again, and we plug in the values. And D2 is just half of this length, and that is 1 over 2, since the pressure distribution is uniform. And for DW equals... But why I say this question is hard? It is because it is hard to find D3. So how to find D3? D3 is the horizontal distance between the CG of the water and the P4. So that is the centroid of this area. But in the book, there is no formula for such a strange area. So how can we find the centroid of this area? The answer is by composite area method. If we set this as our x direction, and we label this as a3, A4, and whole square is A5. Then we have the formula A3 x3 bar plus A4 x4 bar equals A5 x5 bar. If you don't know about this formula, you shall go to Globus video and he will talk about where this formula comes from. So A3 is just area of the square minus the area of the quarter circle. And that is 1 square minus i r squared divided by 4. Since we are finding x3, we leave it alone. And a4 is just the area of the quarter circle, which is pi times 1 squared over 4. And what about x4? x4 is here. And we know that this length is 4 divided by 3 pi. So x4 is 1 minus 4 divided by 3 pi. And a5 is the area of the square. So 1 square, and if this is the central of the square, and this length is x5, so x5 is just 1 over 2. And solving all this, that gives x3 equals 0 0.22334 meter, and that is a3 that we are finding. So now we do a moment balance. This one goes clockwise, this one clockwise, and that these two anticlockwise. So we have F, W, D. And we substitute in the value. And we move all the numbers to the right hand side, that gives. Is. And finally, if we solve for FW, we have that is, and we are done with this question. So, today we talk about how to find hydrostatic force on a curved surface. We also work through three examples. Hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. Feel free to ask us any questions and give us any feedback in the comments.